Remember, I said I don't care if you like or subscribe to Miniature Talk Universe. Yeah, yeah, you fucking said that! I lied. Welcome back to yet another round of Miniature Dork Universe. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I make magnetic bases so that uh, when you store your, your miniatures, they just stick to a metal box or a sheet of metal that you've put in a box and they don't get bashed around and smashed and all your hard work doesn't get ruined. So what I do is I get these bases from uh, Peter Pig. They're just um, three centimeter by three centimeter, which is exactly the base size for the rules I'm using, which is uh, Crossfire. Or you can use these Flames of War bases. And some adhesive magnet, magnetic adhesive sheet. Of course, it's out of focus. <laughs> okay, fuck that guy off. So yeah, the first step I do for this is to um, roughen up one side of the base. And on this Peter Pig, I think this might actually be ABS. I could be wrong, but it looks like ABS because one side is really um, shiny. And I give that a little, this is 180 sandpaper. I give this a little sand down. And if you have like a Flames of War base, which I'm sure many of you do, I would sand off the copyright and all the uh, sort of um, relief uh, stuff that's been sort of molded in place. Uh, sand that right off um, because we're going to put that adhesive um, magnet on it and we don't want any obstruction to that. Another material, you, ah, another material you can use is brass. I used to cut my bases to this size out of sheet brass um, and it takes a long time and to file all the edges smooth and nice but it looks great um, but what really makes that the hero is that your figures become bottom heavy so when you drop them they always drop base down <laughs> it's pretty awesome and believe me I've dropped some before and what should have been a horrible disaster is not it just falls base down on the floor and you can cheer because everything is gonna be okay. Now we're going to take a piece of that same 180 sandpaper, the other one I made a sanding block, but we're just gonna roughen up the edges and the top just to give it a good uh, painting service surface. We're gonna put some primer on it. And I'm just gonna use spray can primer because um, it's more heavy duty. I'm gonna take some of the uh, square edge off. Uh, when I did my brass bases, I would bevel them right down and it looks kind of nice, but you know what? I was spending way too much time making bases back in those days, so now I've stripped down the process quite a bit. But yeah, I round off the edges a little just uh, because, of course, that sharp edge when you handle it over and over, it's just gonna, the paint's gonna wear off. When you sort of give it a little round out, it holds the paint much better and you don't even really notice it. Even when I put my labels on, it's still looking pretty square. Now for the next step, once we have her all sanded up, is I'm going to give just one side a coat of contact cement. Now contact cement is usually a two-side thing, but because part of the um, magnet is adhesive, it's gonna act as a contact cement uh, substitute for the other side. And the reason why I do this is because Different adhesive magnets will have different qualities of adhesive on it. So I've had stuff before that really doesn't stick well. But when you put one side with contact cement, then they stick really well. So this stuff here, this is what I... Uh, magnetic Adhesive Sheet by Pro Mag. I use this a lot, although I would say this one's probably the more expensive. The cheaper one I get at an art supply store. I don't know if you have those ones. Um, God, I can't even think of the name of it right now. I'm having a senior moment. But it's a chain, and they just sell this by the roll. But that stuff is typically like a heavier magnet and the adhesive. Um, it's very hard to get off the backing paper. You say a lot of bad words. Uh, and the sticky isn't as good. 
But when you use your friend Mr. LePage uh, Ultra Robust, that's the French side, <laughs> Cola Contact. Contact cement heavy duty, like everything we do in the miniature dork universe. Um, yeah, we put one coat of that on. And when you get the smaller can, that'll last you quite a while. And it actually has a little brush in it. So you put on a nice thin coat. And contact cement, if you've never used it before, you put it on and before you adhere anything to it, you let it dry, like so dry that you can touch it. If you put it on wet like this, uh, you know, it might eventually work, but what it, contact cement, you, it actually adheres through surface tension. So when it's wet, um, you don't get that tacky surface tension that you need. And that's why this works in conjunction with the adhesive, because the adhesive is essentially a kind of contact cement, but it's not actually the cement that's causing the bond. It's the surface tension from the texture it's making on the surface that creates the bond here. And so you let it dry. And it doesn't take too long, obviously, and it's full of... Uh, probably toluene, so <laughs> I wouldn't inhale it as much as you might want to. Ah, fuck. And try not to drop it upside down like I just did. But uh, yeah, it by no means needs to be perfect. It, just get it right out to the edges so you don't have your edges curling off. But for sure, once you've contact cemented this, these magnets are never going to come off unless by some really freak accident. I've stuck them down to our adhesive magnet and now simply with a box cutter type thing or an Ulfa knife to start slicing them out. But be careful not to slice into your plastic because that goes against what is cool and what is not. Just take that off just like so. Trim off some of this excess. So now I go around, got that one pretty close. I go around and just press it down, make sure there's a really good bond between that and the, between the magnet and the base. And then I use a burnisher around the edges because the edge is the important part. Um, because once that starts to go, then could get really bad. And then I just go around and do them all. So yeah, I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but you can actually see some bumpiness from the, uh, from the contact cement. So if that bothers you, um, use the thinner and thin it down. Um, if you use the thinner, I would use the yellow cement. Um, uh, you could use this clear stuff too, but there's kind of like a, a pissy yellow color. Um, it just, it, it, you can see when it's dry better. When it's thin, it's a little bit harder to see with the clear if it's dry or not, but you can just touch it too. When you touch it, it should just be totally dry. None should come off on your finger. That's when it's ready to go. Um, I. I don't know if I'll bother. I don't know if these bumps will bother me that much because it's on the bottom. Uh, the, the crappy magnet is a bit thicker, so you don't see that. But this stuff is thin enough that it's uh, showing. But uh, it still sticks to the bottom of your whatever metal surface you're going to stick them to. I just get metal um, baker's tins. I buy them online. I forget what shop, but, uh, you know, just they give you the dimensions. Just get the dimensions that make sense for whatever it is you're basing and putting in there and buy those. And they work quite well. The only thing I don't like is they're not really stackable. So you might want to find something that makes like a stackable box and that just makes all of your stuff even more secure. So even when you move, 
a large distance, your stuff isn't going to get messed up. Because I moved from Ontario to Nova Scotia. And out of all of the things, um, like all of my stuff, there was just a couple, there was just a couple things that needed some repairs. So you get that all burnished down and then we're going to carefully slice it to size. I use this square blade because I find the square blade, A, I can see if it's perpendicular to the side, but B, it also helps to cut it square, which is what we want. A nice square cut. You don't want to come in on an angle because that's going to suck and we don't want it to suck. We want it to be excellent. Here at Miniature Dork Universe, we strive for ignorance and excellence simultaneously. <laughs> Who would have thought? So if there's a bit of a flap, um, let's take out your... I usually go through after I take the majority of it off and then carefully, again, the flat blade helps you do this and the contact cement should also help you out here getting all the excess off. If a little bit of the base comes off it's not a big deal but you don't you know I feel like if you use like a an exacto or a scalpel it's way easier to chop into the plastic significantly and that's not what we want. The other thing you can do if you want to add weight to the base is just add some, you know, put a washer on it or something, just glue that down with some super glue or some epoxy glue. It depends too what you're putting on your base. If you're using like plastic miniatures, then your base is going to be heavier than the miniatures, but my stuff going on, these are all metal. So the metal is quite heavy. And so then the base is no longer base heavy. It's now top heavy. So if you want to prevent that, you can just add weight to the base. The groundwork will add weight. So I'm not going to show you doing all of these, but I've just basically cut it to this. And then I will get my, this is a finer sandpaper block. I just glued it to, or taped it down to a piece of plexiglass to make it flat. I'm going to give the edges a little sand. And the contact cement is so, such a good bond that it's not going to, uh, it's not going to peel off. You might see some like little areas of glue. You can just peel that off. It's it's almost like uh, rubber cement too. But any of us that took graphic design back in the day, before computers, we rubber cemented everything to everything. That was how we displayed all of our work. So yeah, I've just sanded down those edges, and now we're just going to give it a little sweep off. I'll probably clean these off with a bit of rubbing alcohol before I hit it with the primer, but essentially that's ready to prime. You might see some goo from the uh, contact cement, but it's dry, it's not wet, so it comes off pretty easy. And it sands pretty, pretty good. It's, it's kind of rubbery, but it, uh, it's kind of satisfying to sand it <laughs> in a way, in some weird way. And already the, uh, the bumps seem to have gone out too. So the, uh, I don't know, just working with it seems to flatten it out. So I will do all of these and then we will go on to our primer. Here they are all primed up. So I just used spray can primer 
managed to get a nice dark brown color, but of course you can do them any color you want, whatever is relevant to your painting style. And when it's time to put the miniatures down on it, I just put a drop of uh, super glue. Um, because obviously, even with plastic figures, it's not going to stick too well to the primer. Um, but that's it. Those are, those are done. And so here I've got some Japanese knee mortars in progress. Uh, I've super glued them down and then stuck the groundwork and, you know, I'll continue on with the various groundwork. And I'm working on some more Dutch East Indies guys. So these fellows will end up on these bases. So that's about it for this video. That's how you magnetize your bases. And then, um, yeah, I'll show you a whole bunch of pictures of stuff on finished magnetized bases as per normal here at the end. Okay, so this is a little creepy, the little reflection here. Ooh. Okay, so this is the final, or the point of all this magnetic basing. You can buy these metal boxes. I just bought these online. Um, and with your magnetized bases, you know, you can put all of your troops in it. I even put stuff in the lid, some of the markers that I make. I'm playing uh, Crossfire, so they're relevant to playing Crossfire. And you've got all of your um, miniatures in there, and then if you shake the fuck out of it, they don't all bash around, and all your hours of hard work stay protected. And it, it's pretty nice, actually. Um, I jolly well like it. And... Uh, these boxes, I mean, if you wanted to get really anal, you could even paint the boxes <laughs> a relevant color. Um, but I just make my own, like, magnetized, you know, label to put on the box. And then I know that this is full of my Germans, my 1943 to 45. And, uh, yeah. So that's it. That's how it's done. Hopefully... Uh, this helps you out if you were thinking of magnetizing your armies. I highly recommend it. <laughs> I have stuff that's very old that, uh, you know, looks like I just finished it yesterday because it um, stays so well protected in these cases. Yeah, I'll show you a whole bunch of pictures of stuff on finished magnetized bases as per normal here at the end. So thanks for watching, and hopefully this will help you uh, base up your infantry and keep them from getting smashed.